Hey folks, David Frost, My Strategic Forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Tuesday, July 14, 2015. Here's a chart of the SPY, and it's much of the same story. We got a little follow through today, which is good. Um, it confirms that the head and shoulders uh, neckline is off the table. This is no longer a pattern that's valid, although we'll leave the trend line in uh, because it'll give us a good indication once we come below the trend line that the party's over. Um, but I don't think the party's going to be over until we reach 212 up here or potentially higher, um, although you'll know that tomorrow... Uh, should mark a, another short-term top in the market. Now, how, how much of a pullback we get from that top remains to be seen. I'm not sure this is the end of the rally. It may just be uh, slightly down to sideways. If we get a bigger move down, um, we'll know it when we see it. But uh, tomorrow should mark a daily cycle top. However, um, that doesn't mean the market has to start down tomorrow morning. It could also mean that the market goes up tomorrow to 212 and then tops out, or it could mean that the market turns over at some point during the day. Remember, all these cycle dates that I give you are always plus or minus one day. So it could have topped out today at um, today's highs, and it could top out on Thursday or uh, on a remote chance, we could blow through the daily cycle top and continue up. But ev even if we do, um, 212 is going to be extremely uh, valid and good resistance on the upside. And even if we go higher, there's not much more in it from there. So what you'll know is, and this is the bigger picture, this is more important than what happens over the next day or two. What's more important is during the uh, second half of the year for the next, let's say, uh, three to four months, uh, this stuff in here is going to look like child's play. We're going to see lower prices, lower than this. We're going to see a lot more volatility, and we're going to see a lot more whipsaw up and down um, throughout the next few months. When does that all begin? Um, my inclination is that it begins somewhere around now to the next, you know, 10 days or so. Somehow, I just have this um, strong feeling that we've got to get up and above or up to the 212 area in the SPY before any of that happens. Uh, coinciding with the ES contract, that number is really in and around the 2115. In fact, let's give this one a red line also. Uh, we might as well be consistent and we'll give it a thick red line, and uh, we're going to use that as a proxy for the upside. So um, from this point forward, the uh, indexes or indices, as they are known, um, should have some more upside, yet um, don't be surprised if we do uh, pull back a little bit tomorrow. Remember, Wednesday was always a pivotal day this week, one way or the other, but the, the catch is that there's really no way to tell whether the... Um, a pivotal day will be, you know, from from tonight or tomorrow morning or after tomorrow's close or sometime during the day tomorrow. You know, that's the uh, that's the hundred thousand dollar question. I wish I could pinpoint it uh, by the hour. Uh, I just can't do it. But um, as long as we know that, um, you know, we're, we're getting close to another top, even though we just had a bottom last week, um, you know, you've got to be vigilant and you've got to be aware of any long positions and uh, you've got to be, if you want to play the short side, the best way to do that is to begin accumulating uh, some short positions. If you play options, then you go out and give yourself some time. Um, uh, August or September, preferably September would be a good month to uh, accumulate any option positions on the short side. This way, if we do get a spike up to even above the 2115 or above 212 in the SPY, um, you're, you're not going to get killed and you've got time on your side because time will be, um, will be, you know, if time's on your side, pardon me, uh, then, you know, you'll be okay because the market will turn back down. So uh, I hate to give you both sides of the story, but nevertheless, this is a tricky market. I mean, look at what happened down here. This is not an easy market to navigate. 
Those, those folks down here thought prices were going lower. I told you that they were possible to go lower, but this would have been a buy zone. But we were not surprised that prices went higher because we knew that it was a cycle bottom due in here, and that certainly is playing out. But this quick advance, and, and remember, to, uh, you know, 2040, for example, all the way up to uh, 2105 today is a pretty good move, okay? You're, you're looking at a lot of points. You know, that's 45 points in the, uh, in the SPY, or I'm sorry, the, S the ES or the uh, SPX or the cash index. That's 45 S&P handles. That's a pretty good move. You don't see that in, in three days very often, right? So that's what happened, and uh, it kind of takes the, uh, the wind out of the sails of someone jumping on here saying, oh, good, the market's in the clear, let's hop on. Well, those folks that are hopping on here are going to have to hop off pretty soon. So, And that's typical. That always happens. Uh, when you get the, um, the average retail investor buying in after the move is complete, um, that's usually where the institutions, the large big money players, are handing them the stock. They're distributing the stock. They're selling into strength. And that's what I recommend everybody does, sell into strength. Okay, let's go over to um, the gold market. Now, gold uh, didn't do anything today. We're still you know, hovering around the 1155 area intraday early this morning you know saw a, a tiny little spike up by a few dollars that's meaningless um you know here up to uh 1160 i guess it was at the high um but we're hovering below 1155 so as long as we continue hovering below 1155 in and around 1155 the story can't change you've got to get some kind of momentum going on the upside uh, uh, over and above 1174 uh, in order for the bullish case to be back on the table. Until that happens, there's nothing doing. In fact, um, you know, if you just want to, here, let me stretch this out. And I want to point something out. It's interesting. Um, here, let's, let's just draw a trend line in. And you'll see that, um, you know, this nothing's perfect, but you'll see that, until this market can really get above this trend line here, and it's not a perfect trend line, hasn't been hit, hit all all the time. It's just it it's a it's a it's a capsule that it it's holding the market in check. It's not me drawing in the trend line. It's the market drawing in the trend line. In fact, let's see what happens. Uh, I'm doing this real time. I, I haven't done this um, this particular trend line. Um, you know, before I started the video, I'm just kind of noticing it and saying, hey, you know, this is meaningful. Here, that's even better. Okay, so this is meaningful, right? When you see these trend lines, and then, th and then you can make a case that you're in a channel, right? Uh, something like this. No, that doesn't work. Here, let's, let's draw the channel uh, in here. Okay, here, we'll just do this. Okay, so, so now you're in a channel. All right, so what happens if you work down um, if you work down this channel uh, top end of the channel bottom end of the channel what does that do it brings you down to the 1130 that I was talking about and I'm sorry this gold chart and my uh, video on the gold chart or portion of the video is a little choppy but you know I just did that with you because I spotted the channel real time I didn't even you know notice that until just now so that's the way it works you know you have to you have to look at the charts and stare at them and see what makes sense, see what doesn't make sense. But channels make sense, trend lines make sense. And when you see a trend like this, trend line like this, um, you say, all right, so if you get above, you know, 1160, for example, then you have a chance at 1174. Um, and that's just the way it works. So let's take this out. And uh, there's not much else to talk about gold. What happened with GDX today? I really didn't even notice it all day wasn't paying attention to GDX, but um, nothing happened. So we had a pause day in GDX, uh, and we'll have to see how it plays out. I mean, it's going to be tethered to gold. There's no question about it. You have to get a rally in gold, uh, preferably a rally in the market to get a rally in GDX. So, you know, this is also in a, in a steep downtrend. When you see a market like this that's underneath the 20-period moving average, a downsloping 20 and 50 period moving average, the 200 period moving average, 
you know, it's very, very tough to be long a market like this. You know, even if you take a longer term picture, okay, if you didn't know what chart this was, what would make you buy this chart? Almost nothing, right? What, where is, like, we're at the bottom of the channel, our bottom of the chart here, and below the moving averages, you know, your this is your last stand right here. If if you don't hold 1640, then who knows, right? Well, where's the monthly chart? Okay, if you don't hold 1640, then, you know, eh, 1592, 1590, it's not that far away. But, you know, who wants to be long this market? And I'm not saying that the chart can't bottom out here. I'm just saying you have to wait for a bona fide bottoming signal. And look at this even here. Even here you had a monthly reversal candle and it didn't work. It failed. So this is telling you that the whole gold complex is extremely weak and uh, you really need to see the gold market and GDX, the gold miners. It has to show us something before we're ready to go long this market. And that's basically the bottom line. All right, let's look at uh, oil, because oil is more interesting than gold right now. I want to go over to the intraday 10-minute chart because there's something important. Last night, we put in this line at 52.80, and look what happened. Okay, we, we chopped around this morning, and we got a rally, and isn't it interesting how all the pundits in the uh, media, whether it's the blogs, whether it's um, on television, they were all, all convinced that as long as we got a deal in Iran, that was going to flood the market with oil and push oil prices lower. And what happened? It's unbelievable how they're wrong almost 100% of the time. Okay, the market already priced all that in. Once the news is out, it's a, it's a, it's a sell on the rumor in the case of oil, buy on the news. And that's exactly what it was. So I drew this 80, 5280 in here last night for us. And look what happened. We get above 5280, and look how important that level was. Dip below it, came back, tested it, up, tested it, tested it, and now we're up above it, comfortably above it. So my case is that above 5280, and we did, you know, there's hourly, let's see, let's go to the hourly chart. All right, so you have... Um, yeah, your hourly close above 52.80. So this is bullish. In my mind, it's going to take a little bit of uh, work to get through the um, 200 period moving average on this 60 minute chart here. But this is the bullish case. And where's your next stop? Most likely right up here at double top at 53.90 uh, and probably pierce through it, go to $54. So anybody that trades the oil futures market, you probably have um, 80 cents on the upside from here uh, that's not a bad move it's about eight hundred dollars per contract and uh, there you go 5280 above 5280 is your bullish case back below 5280 is your bearish case pretty simple stuff so I love it when the numbers uh, come come to pan out and they uh, and they work so I like it when a plan comes together all right let's go to uh, the bond market okay we'll look at the TLT and we had a little bit of an up move today in the TLT, but nothing to write home about. Um, you know, this held one day. One day doesn't make a trend. Uh, I'm looking for higher prices in the TLT, uh, certainly higher than this. So we'll see how the next day or so uh, works out, pans out. Um, but again, over the longer term, intermediate to longer term I'm not expecting this 1543 11543 to hold uh, many more times you had a third hit a third bona fide hit uh, you're bouncing off of it now you did have a cycle bottom you know it's it's playing out in a very quiet way right now so we'll have to see what happens in the bonds in the coming days uh, but nothing to do there. There's really no trade right here. I mean, unless you want to be long. I mean, you could. I shouldn't say no trade. You can be long the TLT with a stop out with a close below yesterday's low at 1543 or what was the low? 1539. It's close enough. Um, you can certain, certainly be long with a, uh, with a tight stop along those lines. There's nothing wrong with that. That's the way you trade. Uh, okay, natural gas had a little bit of a down day. Um, here's my natural gas. Uh, 
A little bit of a down day, but nothing. We're still above the 200 period moving average. Still in an uptrend here. Um, I still think there's higher prices coming in natural gas. Uh, so, you know, if we go sideways for a few days, that's probably the preferred method. This way it puts in a base to go higher. You know, you want to see the market do this. How did that come yellow? It was red last time I looked. Anyway, um, so, you know, the market will, uh, if this happens, you know, maybe we get another up move like this. Um, or uh, if we come back down, then we'll have to reassess. But I'm still looking for higher prices in natural gas as it stands. Nothing has changed on that front. Um, I do want to bring up, uh, well, let's talk about the dollar. I just wanted to bring up uh, one stock in particular I want to talk about. It's important. Um, the dollar had a little bit of a down move today. Not, nothing catastrophic. Um, however, tomorrow being the pivotal day, I'm actually looking for lower prices in the dollar also tomorrow. How much lower? Um, let me go to my notes. Bear with me. Okay, uh, dollar. Yeah, so I'm going to put a line in here because um, not necessarily tomorrow, but I think, oh, you know what? I'm just going to use this line here. Yeah, let me get rid of this. Pardon me for doing the work while I'm making the video. I apologize. But sometimes it's okay to do it real time. You get to see how it's done. Um, everybody knows how to draw a line in a chart, I think. Uh, let's see. 90. Where's that number? Dollar. Okay, here it is. 96.15. 96.15. Okay. That's going to be our downside target this week. I don't know exactly which day it will be hit, but I would say that um, beginning tomorrow, you may see a down move to 96.15. Uh, that's not going to take it out of the uh, out of really a bullish position because you're above the moving averages. Um, it's just a pullback, but you'll hear all kinds of stuff like the dollar's collapsing and oil prices up because of the dollar. Oil's not going to be up because of the dollar. Oil's going to be up because it's over the 52.80. But the dollar should pull back over the next couple of days. And my target on the downside is 96.15. Hopefully that helps. Now I want to show you something a little bit different. I don't know or remember whether I've showed you this Apple chart that I've been working with. And I know there's been uh, a couple of members, more than a couple of members, that have been emailing me about Apple. And I'm happy to answer the emails. So keep them coming. That's totally fine um, but I want to show you what I'm looking at here okay I'm looking at let me explain these lines so this line was the first line I had in here which was a support line um, while Apple was make Apple drew this line and I didn't draw it in right the chart drew this line in and as we beat on this line it was telling you that this was an extremely important trend line and that once we broke below this trend line lower prices were coming once we broke below the trend line I drew in this line and this was going to be my line in the sand we had the one we'll call it a capitulation day down below 120 bounce back right above it the following day and then you know next couple of days here we are so the question is, can we get above back into this, what's called a pennant formation? And I'm not big on the names of these formations, but that's what it is. It's a pennant formation. And um, my upside target for Apple is really no, no more than around 130, which is just busting outside the top end of this pennant formation. And um, there was a few members that I gave that number out to. Um, over the last few days that were long or wanted to be long Apple. So I, I just want everybody to be aware that um, I'm looking to exit up and about this area here on a long position from Apple because I don't see higher prices from there. And the fact that we're going to see lower prices in the overall market, you can bet your bottom dollar that Apple's going to come down with it. Now, I'm not sure exactly when Apple reports earnings. Um, I, I have to look that up. But assuming that Apple reports earnings and the fact that the market is probably going to be rolling over around that time, you're going to hear that Apple's earnings were disappointing for some reason or another. They didn't sell enough um, iWatches or they didn't do something right. You know, those are all the reasons or the excuses after the fact. The real reason is 
these lines here. The real reason is the chart is telling us Apple's weak. So for example, you know, yesterday Apple was fine, the day before Apple was fine, today the market was up, you know, half a percent relatively speaking. The S&P was up 45 basis points, the Dow was up 40 basis points. Um, the NASDAQ was up 66 basis points, almost uh, or two thirds of a percent. But um, Apple was flat. And uh, and that that's con that should be concerning because Apple, if Apple's not a market leader, then who is? OK, let's look at another market leader just just for kicks here. Amazon. Amazon had a good day. Right. But how much higher do you think Amazon's going to go than this number here? So here we are, we're at new highs, okay? How much higher do you think Amazon has? Maybe $5? Um, I don't see it. And, and I'll, let, me, let me go through this with you. I've done this before. This works more often than it doesn't. You see this big up candle here, okay? The up candle had a low of 377 and a high of uh, 452. So... This is about $75, okay? So then what I do is I take the low point of this consolidation pattern here, and this is a weekly chart, so this is going sideways for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 weeks. We break out, and $75 from this low point here, which is uh, 414, brings us to about what 488 89 I'm doing quick math in my mind um, so so you know that's the absolute top end I could see and that's you know 25 or 24 dollars from here but I find it hard to believe we can go up 24 or 25 dollars from this point unless um, at some point you get Amazon earnings and the market wants to uh, blow it up to that number. But that would be a, that would really be the only short I would take in Amazon. If we got up there, I would probably entertain a short with a tight stop up at about 489. Um, but I don't think we get there. So that, I'm just giving you kind of two things in one. I'm giving you uh, the top. End. I'm not long Amazon or anything. I'm just giving you the top end of Amazon because it's another you know market leader but I'm also explaining how I derive some of these price levels when there's really no chart pattern to be had or you can't it's very difficult to determine how high a stock will go so I use alternative methods and they they work out most of the time it's not an absolute it's not a perfect science but it works out most of the time okay um, so you know here we are I just don't see the only way I see Amazon going higher from this point is if we, maybe we put in, um, you know, some a pullback pattern, maybe some sideways, uh, you know, sideways days here. This is back to the daily chart, you know, kind of something like this. Retrace some of this move, and then maybe there's another up move coming. That's about the only way I see much higher prices in Amazon. Um, just to give you a clue on that. One more stock I'll talk about today, just because it's a fun uh, discussion. Um, let's talk about Twitter, and I want to show you the intraday chart because um, you see what happened here. Twitter began to rally, and it spiked higher, and it spiked higher on a false, A, it was a false rumor, B, it was actually a false press release or news report that somehow made it onto the news wires, and you'll notice that Every single month, this this week, meaning options expiration week, which is this week, is notorious for that kind of nonsense. So when you find that you're long a stock like this, if you're long a stock like this and you see this kind of stuff going on, it's a great time to take some profits off the table because it's usually false. It's usually game, play, game playing. I don't know how this stuff happens. I don't know why the, the media reports on rumors. I don't know how you get a phony press release on the news wires. It's just unbelievable how this happens month in, month out. Um, you'll probably see a rumor on something like lumber liquidators. You'll see a rumor on, uh, you know, some other stuff that's beaten down, or you'll see a rumor on stuff that's up big. It happens month in, month out. 
Last month, we saw a sniff of a rumor of lumber liquidators being bought out by Home Depot. Don't be surprised if that cycles back around this week. Um, so just for fun, little ordinary stuff. Um, I think that's a bit it. We're going to give it a wrap there. Um, hopefully it's helpful, folks. Any questions, shoot me an email. I'm David Frost, My Strategic Forecast. Thanks for tuning in for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.